hello, and welcome back to Invisible Man Simulator, uh, Calamity Not Death Mode, uh, episode 19. So we're back, we have full map control, uh, we got full shroomite armor with the ranged arrow headpiece, uh, which makes us go fully invisible. Now one thing I wanted to say is, yesterday's video, if you didn't read the description, or if you saw it and you weren't sure why I was insanely mad, uh, I had to deal with two to three hours, maybe four hours of blue screen issues. I was just getting the blue screen to death so much. It was it was so annoying. It might have been a RAM problem. It might have been some dust. I have no idea. Like, literally no idea. It just decided to stop happening after I took the RAM out about four times and put it back in. So... Here's to hoping. I'm also not going to play Civ anymore because Civ was the only common denominator. So we got the uh, the hoverboard going with the full set of armor, just to let you know. The hoverboard does give 10% increased damage to whatever helmet we have. So since we have the bow, the bow one, we do 10% more damage than the 15%. So we do 25% bonus damage with arrows. Um, now going over death mode and why I'm not going to change it. Um, so I'm just going to list a few bosses, and then I'll tell you exactly what the changes in Death Mode versus Revengeance are. Desert Scourge, Eater of Worlds, Queen Bee, Wall of Flesh, The Twins, Brimstone Elemental, which we're going to do today, along with the Aquatic Scourge, The Destroyer, Skeletron Prime, Calamitous, Plantera, Leviathan, uh, Golem. Astrum Aris, Plaguebringer Goliath, Ravager, uh, Dragon Folly, which is Bumblebee, uh, Old Duke, which I'm never going to do, Devourer of Gods. Now, all of these guys have the exact same thing where if you were to go onto the wiki, into the death mode section, and just hit Control F, speed, they would show up on that. Their speed just increases based on how much damage they've taken. Sorry, I had a gate set on the uh, on the recording so you couldn't hear the background audio. You couldn't hear the music. That's so sad. Uh, okay, so we have a blood orange, which I crafted last night but didn't eat. It took life fruit, some orange blood root, dye, ten blood orbs, and five of each soul. Of course, we killed all the bosses. This gives us 25 more health, so now we're at 525 and we've got a bit orange of health. Now there is another thing, there are a few more things we can make with the life fruit. So that we did the blood orange, next we can make dragon fruit. I'm pretty sure that's the next one. No, the next one is... Is it this one? I'm not entirely sure. Um... I, I, I wish it would say requires you to eat blank. Um... Like, can only be consumed if you ate blood orange. I'm fairly certain it goes Blood Orange, Miracle Fruit, Eldberry, Dragon Fruit. Because Dragon Fruit's definitely the last one with this. Uh, but yeah, so we need we need Life Alloy for that. And to make Life Alloy, we can actually make this because we're going to be doing two things today. Uh, we're going to be fighting the boss, Aquatic Scourge, as well as the Brimstone Elemental. I don't know if we'll be able to do Acid Rain, who really cares? We might do Solar Eclipse. Uh, but we're going to leave Calamitous to a later date because it's either Calamitous or Plantera, so I don't really care which one, like when we do Calamitous since we've done Plantera. But yeah, so I'm going to go fight these bosses. We'll probably start with the Brimstone Elemental just to get that out of the way. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys down there. Okay, so I was looking at some things and, well, I was looking at uh, what I should be building. Uh, the weapon I have isn't the best weapon. I could build something that requires some, uh, what are those called? Uh, hold on. I can find it, don't worry. Ectoplasms. Uh, I could make a bow that, that uses ectoplasm, but I don't really care that much about making a new bow unless I'm having a real hard time. But there are some arrows I can make that are way better. Now, the DPS on these, I tested it out. I don't want to use too many of them because they use living shards. Uh, but we're going to make 2,000 of these. Now, we can't get an endless supply of these. Just uh, 
just a warning to myself. Uh, but these do about 300 to 500 more damage on average than uh, than the other arrows on a single target. So seems like a good upgrade. We do have three charred idols, and I set up two teleporters, one here and one here, just to take us to the Craig. Now, I should probably not be using these arrows. I mean, I do have a large chance to just not consume them, which is very nice. But yeah, so I got a three, sorry, two screen wide arena here. And I'm just going to set up oop, the uh, some of this stuff. Just so then we have a, a decent chance of running into one of these and getting the buff. Just in case, you know, things go south, I can just make sure I'm always getting the buff, especially since it's an unlimited use item. Might as well make the stand in as many places as possible, so we always have the honey buff, even if we're lingering in a single spot for a while and then move a little bit. So, we're just going to buff up, kill these enemies, and start off with the Brimstone Elemental. First boss. Okay, we're going to switch over to the correct stuff. Now the Brimstone Elemental, ooh, it has a little buddy now. That's cool. Uh, this boss, probably one of my favorite, but also least favorite bosses. It's not a bad boss, it's just the projectiles get a little difficult to deal with from time to time. As well as the fact that you just like, you need a twice as big of a screen as what you have pretty much, which is kind of annoying. But other than that, it's a really good boss. Because it has like really solid phases and everything, but the hard like the uh, like the expert mode basically, the level two version of her is really difficult. But yeah, she just flies around, shoots stuff at you, teleports pretty much, but she shoots a lot of stuff at you when she gets enraged uh, into the third phase. So laser mode, obviously like one of the easiest things to just dodge, but she does predict it a little bit. She tries to predict you. But yeah, she goes into this phase right here pretty often. But yeah, not too difficult of a boss. And also very TOS <laughs> with, the, uh, with the icons. <laughs> pretty good. Ooh, try and dodge, try and dodge. I don't think the rotted discord is really all that useful until it's like a hotkey. Or until it's a boss where there's like almost undodgeable attacks. This is pretty manageable. Oh, got to dodge the super waves. The thing about the super waves is you don't want to, like, double back on yourself. Okay, let's head over to the other side. Ooh, I'm getting hit. Getting hit again. <laughs> but yeah, Brimstone Elemental is not that difficult. Probably, probably the easiest of the hard mode bosses until you get to the second uh, version variant of her because you can fight her twice, once before and once after Providence. So this is the before Providence one, and it's it's fairly easy. Really straightforward, doesn't do buttloads of damage to you, and dies pretty easily. And now we can mine charred ore from this area, which is very nice. Uh, we're just gonna keep those. Holy cow, our, our, uh, our percentage to not use arrows chance is a lot higher than I thought it would be. Uh, we're gonna sneak down here now. Now, the lava in this area does hurt me, so we're just gonna get this over with as soon as possible. Thankfully, we do have some good old, uh, oh my goodness, that was trippy. Oh my goodness, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. I'm just trying to mine your ore, bro. We do have some, uh, convenience here because this does count as an ore. So we will be able to mine it almost instantly. We'll put that on so we can go a bit faster. But yeah, so that was uh, that was the Brimstone Elemental. We'll uh, we'll move over to the dungeon, farm out a little bit of that. I'll show a little bit of it, but it'll be pretty simple. Uh, and then we'll just head on over to the Aquatic Scourge. Okay, so I never actually uh, did anything to the dungeon to make it like farming capable, so that's kind of an issue. <laughs> Thinking, thinking about it now. Uh, but yeah, I'm just basically hanging out in this big open area, waiting for stuff to spawn, and then taking advantage of the fact that they're all going to go below me. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much the whole thing. I have gotten a few interesting things, like Wrath of the Ancients, which... Oh my goodness, that's interesting. 
I've never seen that before. I think that's pretty new. Is that from Calamity? Yeah, it is from Calamity. I've never actually seen that before. That must be pretty new. Ecto blood turns into ectoplasm. Uh, so it's pretty much just like a, hey, if you didn't get good RNG with the ectoplasm guys, uh, here you go. And then we also do have iodists. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce this at all, dude. Uh, but basically, they, uh, they're, they're like cultist, lunatic cultists that just hang out in here. Uh, they're also in the abyss. Uh, believe it or not, pretty crazy that they'd hang out in two different places, uh, just like you know, existing and stuff. But uh, they drop tablets, and the tablets, I'm fairly certain, summon uh, the lunatic cultist. I'm not entirely sure, but I think so. Ooh, the paladin. I might want him. I don't know what you can get from him, but there is something I might want for him from him, because I think he gives a shield or something. But, uh, things that I'm wanting from here, obviously a lot of ectoplasm. I am going to want, uh, the tabby, as well as, uh, the other thing, so I can get the Master Ninja gear. Because I'm fairly certain that upgrade gets an upgrade, so I can have, like, a better dash ability than the one that I have right now. These guys are also passive until you hit them. So if you accidentally hit them, They'll fight you and they'll use attacks like that. But they do drop a fair bit of stuff, which is pretty nice. But yeah, I'm just going to be farming these guys out to see what I can't get. Hopefully I get some decent stuff. But yeah, the uh, the ninjas, the bone leaves, are pretty much what I need to be fighting a whole bunch of. So we'll see if I can't get the stuff I'm hoping for in a decent amount of time. And then fight the aquatic scourge. Okay, we're back. I'm not exactly sure how long this episode's going to be, so I'm going to cut it short here. Uh, but before we go, I'm going to say some things. So I managed to get a wisp in a bottle, which summons this cute little wisp here. He's always like kind of ahead of you, pretty much. But it provides, a instead of a moderate amount, a large amount of light in the abyss. So it gives me one more light level. Now, I did manage to get the black belt and the tabby. Uh, but I didn't get them the conventional way. This, uh, this NPC here, the Deviant, sells all of the rare enemy summons. So I can get the, uh, the Skeleton Mages, Skeleton Gunners, Paladin, Bone Lee, um, even Mothrons. Just, they just only spawn in specific conditions. So I just set it to nighttime and spawn them all up. Uh, so I spawn about 20 of those guys just to get those two accessories, which allows us to make the tiger climbing gear, and then the tabby? Oh no, the ninja gear. Ninja gear. Now the master ninja gear can turn into the status belt, uh, but this requires me to get some more purified gel, which I can get pretty easily, but I'll do that between episodes, so then I'll manage to get this, which can obviously turn into a void sash. And that'll take a little bit longer because Nightmare Fuel requires us to have killed a few later game bosses. But hopefully this will give me a bit of an edge. It uh, it doesn't seem that amazing. <laughs> uh, it gives jump speed and allows constant jumping, which I guess I guess is cool. Is this really something I want? I mean... I guess the Void Sash is really good. Uh, but I wonder if I actually want this. We'll see. We'll see if I want it. It doesn't seem that amazing. Uh, I can't craft... Oh, no, I can't craft this yet. How far is the dash compared to, uh, my current one? So my current one can go from here to there if I let go. Can this make it all the way back? Yeah, it can. Oh, it goes way farther. Okay, so I will use that. It's worth using. So we got the Master Ninja gear. Can I turn off the ability to climb on walls? I can't. Okay, that's just something I'll have to get used to. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to try and finish off this series before uh, the end of the week. So I'm just going to be pumping out episode after episode. So I'll see you guys in the next one, which I'm filming right now.